Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is Bob Cook who is doing the regular book review that people have taken to their hearts so thank you for that and um, today we're, we're kind of having a look at quite a pivotal book it's by Eric Byrne founder of TA Principles of Group Treatment first published in 1967 so after his seminal book The Games People Play and you were telling me just off camera it's there's something in chapter 11 which is the first thing that that burn has actually did well yeah yeah let, let me say and when he created uh, ta really which is 59 and then in 1961 his seminal book uh, which is first book which is uh, transaction analysis um, the psychotherapy of transaction analysis and he put all his major four cornerstones in script analysis games analysis uh, TA proper and ego states. Um, that was his first book. Then you got games people play. Then you got then you got another book about organisations. And then in this book is principles of good treatment. In chapter eleven, he really talks for the first time about how you do TA, how you actually do it. Not all the theories which he spent most of the other books talking about, but actually how you do transaction analysis. And as important, how you do TA in groups. How interesting, because you, you were saying earlier that TA really found its life in groups. Oh. It starts oh, yeah. as a group process as opposed to an individual process. Oh, yeah, he was a psychiatrist and he worked at Carmel Hospital, you know, in, uh, in San Francisco. And very much so, he, he started the first TA group ever, of course. And the... Um, the purpose of that early TA in groups was to help the, uh, the clients, if you like, we're going to use that language, help them function better in adult by tracing and following transactions. Mm. In other words, how people communicate with each other. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And how to stay an adult and not to go into the unconscious or to the parent ego state. Yes. Yeah. Fascinating. And... Um, as you, as you say in in, in chapter eleven, he he goes to explain the how as opposed to the the why, the practice as opposed to the theory. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. An interesting thing, in chapter eleven. Like, I I find very interesting because I've been a TA therapist and integrative therapist of whew, forty odd years, or getting on that way. But in this book, in the chapter eleven, he talks. He says this: to be a real TA therapist, you must. Go to the board, that's the whiteboard, and teach um, at least three or four times in an hour session. Right, so this is the client. You, you no, teach. This is the therapist. Say, I'll go, Eric Byrne said, to be a TA therapist, yes. you must visit the whiteboard. I don't know if there were whiteboards then, I'm, you know, I'm talking about now. Yeah, yeah. You must visit the board and you must write and teach the client about parent, adult, child, games right. and understanding of the self through that modality at least three or four times i mean that's really important because there'll be a lot of students watching this i know we get a lot of students watch this who may be doing comparative therapies and it really it really gives the idea you've kind of made that come alive you know mm. burn certainly did that ta is a taught model to some extent yeah, yes. it's a Definitely. taught model yeah yeah, that's right. And um, you know, in CBT, they have individualized learning plans. Yeah. Well, uh, Eric Byrne, I think, was the first CBT therapist. And he would give all his clients homework. Mm. And he would go to the board at least, as I said, three, four, five times in an hour's session and, and provide an educative part to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Which still, exi which still really exists to this day, doesn't it? Yeah. It's still, it's still, the legacy of that still lives on. The right. TA therapists explain the model and the process of personality and then allow the client to kind of find their yeah. way within what's taught, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because Eric Byrne's major principle was that he wanted to help the client strengthen their adult ego state mm. and to understand their psychological internal process. And the best way he said to do that, in Chapter 11 particularly, was to go to the... Uh, board and teach three or four times ego states, games, rackets, script. So they have from their adult a knowledge of when they're in parent, adult, and child. Yeah. 
I think that's I think that's so useful, Bob, because you know I think a lot of a lot of people who look think of therapy think of it as I think it's on a number of levels. Some people think it's the couch. Um, other people think it's as they see maybe on the TV with an Anise, one ther- a therapist working with the client's frame of reference. Mm. But it's so useful to hear you talk about TA being a talk model, that mm. educative, giving the clients the tools oh, yeah. to be yeah. able to see, see how they are in the world. Yeah. And, and this particular book talks about how to do it as opposed yeah. to the theory. That's right. And it concentrates particularly um, on how you do TA in groups. Because TA came out of groups. Like I said, uh, aiding communication. But most of all, um, the therapist would help the person uh, know when they're in parent, know when they're in a child, know when they are actually transacting in an unhealthy way, and teach that. And yeah. teach it. Yeah. Like what you've just said, teaching it. Well, I think it's really, really useful to hear. Who would benefit from reading this book? Students. Students would really benefit from reading this because they would understand fundamentally how TA was taught in a classical way, how it was taught in the 1960s, where Eric Byrne was coming from. This is way before the idea of relationship psychotherapy that we're so engrossed in today. Uh, Eric Byrne was actually was a CBT therapist. He did talk about uh, how to do it. He never talked about the relationship. I think he just assumed that you would spend time building up a rapport anyway. He was much more interested in healing a person in one session, two sessions, three sessions, four sessions, but teaching people an understanding of an easy, accessible model where they know where they're coming from. Well, it it, it sounds to me like a legacy book. It shows a yeah. legacy of TA, gives yeah. students a real good grounding yeah. in, in the fundamental principles of it. And also, with that, gives them an idea of the arc of change that's gone through TA through the years, the relationship model, right. contracting, yeah. you know... It, yeah, big, change. big changes. I mean, a fan of education. That you are. Per- I'm really glad you put it that way, because if people watching this video go away, I want them to remember that he was an educator as well as a therapist. Mm. Yes, it's it's something that sometimes gets lost in the translation and uh, the idea that the the kind of formative um, part of of the theory was was the the key part of it as opposed to the the restorative is 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 very interesting so as usual we'll put um a link in the bar below so you can inspect this book and also at the end we'll give you a picture of the book as bob said well worth visiting just for historical context and to see how the arc of therapy ta therapies changed through the years as always bob Bob isn't being paid for this. This is just Bob sharing his love of literature and his enormous um, knowledge of the world of therapy. So as always, Bob, it's always a pleasure and uh, thank you very much.